Hey, how are you doing? This is Phil from statisticsmentor.com and in this video we're going to be looking at the paired samples t-test. Now in a lot of situations such as in experiments we'd like to compare the means between two groups and we have one of two choices. We use this independent samples test or a paired samples test. Now a paired sample is one in which each thing that we're measuring is measured twice. For example, diet. Does a diet work? So on the in the experiment weigh each person before diet and after diet. This way each person, the way we've designed it, each person has two measurements before and after. As opposed to an independent samples design which be would be in the diet case would be for example to take one group of people and measure their weights without diet take another group of people measure the weights after diet now that wouldn't be such a good design because you know those people before uh, without the diet and with the diet they could be very different so there could be differences apart from the diet coming into effect there so w so to recap m match pairs is where each thing of interest each item is measured twice, independent samples, the thing is measured once. In this example we're looking at the whether insulation, the bills on uh, household warming heating bills for homes with and without insulation. So we take, to see whether insulation reduces bills, we take each house, say this is house one, ID house one, measure it pre-insulation sometime post insulation and do that for each house this way it, this is what we call a um, it's a repeated uh, design this is a design repeated um, measurements now next time we have to ask ourselves a question is are the data normally distributed yes or no if they are yes then we use a t-test if no we use non-parametric test so in this case we let's it's, it's going to be normally distributed um, your lecturer tutor will show you various ways. Some prefer just to show you via graphs like a histogram or a QQPP plot. Some will prefer you, you to run tests for normality. So I'm just going to assume that's that's been done and it passes so it's normally the data normally distributed. Next then is to actually run. So we're going to run a measured a, a paired t-test. Compare means, so analyze compare means go to paired samples t-test as opposed to independent samples t-test. Click on that. Okay, reset this. Now, pair. So we have to pair off the variables. So here it is. Each item is measured for two scenarios. No insulation and with insulation. So we take each one and move it across. Now there's two ways to do this. You can click on each one and click the arrow like this, like so. If you prefer, it's much quicker to just highlight the two using an up arrow key like this and just click like that. It takes them both across straight away. Okay? And then we'll just press OK. We'll ignore the options. By de default, it's enough. Okay, and that comes to interpretation. That's enough of button pressing for now. So, paired samples t test. The, mi the mean bill before insulation is 185.7 units, whatever it is. Um, after insulation it's lower 180.229 blah 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 okay based on 50 households so from this this is from the sample data we can see that from the sample the bill after insulation is lower by about five or so units all right but is it significant so we have to test the thing and this is where we do it in the paired samples test so the mean difference is what this is, it just says mean, but it's the mean difference, you can see 185 minus 180, approximately is 5, so it's there. Alright, and then the figure we want is over here, the t-test. 14.843 and degree of freedom 49, not of interest really, but we'll report those. Ultimately we need these two figures, the t and the degree of freedom, to compute the p-value. p-value is 0, 0.000. That means it's way less than 0.05, and remember the rule that p is low, null must go. We reject the null, 
So we, the null hypothesis, oh, I didn't say what the hypothesis, I should have done this right at the start, not to me. The null hypothesis for the test is that there is no difference in means between the two groups versus the alternative is that there is a difference in means between the two groups. This makes it a two-tailed test by default. You can see that's why it says two-tailed because the alternative is there is a difference. We reject the null so we conclude that there is a difference. Moreover, if there is a difference, moreover, you can say w which way the difference is because you can see if there is a difference, it must be in one group is less than or not greater than the other group. Well, you can see from the sample, this suggests to you already that the before is higher than after. Okay. You could also see that from the confidence interval, both lower and upper are positive. Zero is not in the interval. And here, since this is five plus 5.55 you can see it's done before minus after that's the way it's done it so the confidence interval will also be before minus after and since they're both positive that tells you that the true mean lies in here somewhere and the true mean is a positive value meaning that the mean value for before must be greater than the mean value for after well evidence of that going on all right in a report we would write something like this that is very strong evidence, very strong since the p-value is even less than 0 0.01 that the bill before insulation is higher than the bill after insulation open brackets and then report the t statistic with a degree of freedom the p-value is less than 0 0.01 or write 0 0.05 if you're more comfortable with that and this is true even for the one-tail case alright so that's that's it. Easy as that. Just check, because uh, through this thing, I didn't check properly for normality. So as I said, that's because your your lecturer will have some preference for graphs or a test statistic. If it passes the norm normality test, we run uh, this paired samples t test. If the data is slightly off normal this would still be fine but if it's very skewed we'd run the non-parametric version of this which would be the Wilcoxon test and that's for another time right fantastic well done